Hello everyone, back again. <laughs> First and foremost, Happy New Year's to each and every one of you, especially the blue crew and the red crew, because this is what it's all about. It's about us getting our shit right. Uh, I hope your families prosper. And also it's about the kids, man. 2023, let's make it about the kids. All right, let's go. Everyone should know my name by now, but if you don't, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Judson Pakai. I'm an original founding member of West Side Crips, started by Stanley Tookie Williams in 1970. We headquartered out of St. Andrews Park. Uh, a lot of people say they were a co-founder. Bullshit. There's no co-founders of West Side Crips. The only founder co-founder Stanley Tookie Williams. Now, if there was going to be any co-founder, it would be Donald Archie, which we used to call him Sweetback. Uh, I'm, as I said before, I'm original Crip. I didn't come lately. I'm original West Sider. I, along with my crime partners, were the ones who were convicted of the Robert Ballou murder at the Palladium in 1972 of March at the first Soul Train in California, March the 20th. Uh, now I'm going to get into what I want to talk about. You know, I, we always talk about, on you, you go on social media, especially YouTube, and your chat houses and your chat rooms, whatever you call them, and you see most of them, they're talking about Crips. Okay, half you don't know what the fuck you're talking about anyway, but it doesn't make a difference. I'm going to talk about something that no one really touches on, Cripplets. The founder of the Cripplets, Bonnie Williams. Do I know Bonnie? Yes, she's a very good friend of mine. And my crime partner, rest in peace, Big Bob, he called her the Queen Bee. When he used to come through the spot when he was in L.A., hey, where you going, Bob? Man, I'm going up to the Queen Bee spot. Okay, we knew who that was. Queen Bee is Bonnie. Right to this day, a immense amount of original West Siders and some East Siders gravitate to Bonnie's house. They gravitate to the Queen Bee. Cripplets, I can't say actually when they were started, but they started shortly after we did. Shortly after we did. Uh, the founder is Bonnie. So let me ask you this. Was Bonnie and Tukey together at the time that Tukey, they started? So they were teenage I, sweethearts. Okay. okay. I'm going to get into that. Okay. The reason the Cripple was started, because Bonnie was going with Took uh, when, when Crip started. And so I guess they just said, uh, we're going to escalate to, uh, we're going to have Cripplets. Whoever thought it up, thought up a good one. Some of the originals, uh, Bebe, Black Connie, Jackie, and Pam Todd. Can't forget my, my girl, Big Linda. Uh, I said Black Connie, yeah, uh, Bebe, cause his, uh, first Girlfriend, she passed away while we was in the pen. Uh, it was a few more, you know, but uh, I don't think they was originals. Are they yeah. all originally from right there where you guys are at, out of that area? A couple right? of them. Okay. Jackie, Jackie Todd and Pam Todd was off the east side. Oh, but they okay. kicked it on the on the west side. So were they were they with Black Raymond Connie Washington, baby baby crib? Were they with Raymond Washington or no? Okay, okay. Bonnie uh uh Black Connie was from the east side, but they ran on and once the Cripplets started, they ran on the west well, side. The west side, okay. But they didn't claim east side or west side. They just claimed Cripplets. You know, it wasn't no thing with them, no distinction. They were all as one Cripplets. Uh. <clears throat> <coughs> See, we use, excuse me, we use the cripplets to carry our burners, the ones that had it. <coughs> we mob them to a party or something. Uh, and keeping 100, some of them were more deadlier than, than the dudes. 
especially Jackie and Pam Todd. I wouldn't just Pam Todd. Well, that's another story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We gotta be careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a different. That's for a different story. And but, that's uh, what I was gonna ask you about their involvement in them early days. So I know you got to snatch and coast and bulldog and, and making a rap and a name. You guys are putting trips on the map in a major way. And that's how I was. I was curious to know how they got down. But it was just as fierce then, huh? If not more fierce. Then some of the Crips. You know, it's not something I heard. It's something I witnessed with Pam. Especially with Pam Todd. It's something I witnessed. But uh, that's for a different story. Now, let's get back on track. And you know, uh, these chat rooms. And these guys calling themselves Crips or ex-Crips. I don't do this anymore. I don't do that. No, partner. Some of you, matter of fact, not some of you. You know, I hate to say this, but a lot of you are full of shit. You don't know what you're talking about. If you did know what you was talking about, you wouldn't be in them little chat rooms. You wouldn't be getting into all the rigmarole, all the controversy wouldn't be coming back at you if you knew what you was talking about, partner. So, uh, me personally, I don't take to them chat rooms. You know, somebody be telling me and I might listen to a little. He say, listen to this. I might listen to a little of it. But, you know, I'm not a great fan of chat rooms. You know, especially when it's come to Crips. Because a lot of you full of shit. You know? And uh, like I told someone, them guys can get on them chat rooms and be what they want to be. But out there in that real world, when you get caught up, it's a different story. You know, a lot of them has been caught up. They do some or say some on social media, thinking, "Oh, I'm safe." No, you're not safe, partner. Not not if you come in the South Central. See, and I think that's a distinction. You have a you have a lot of people, um, both in California and outside of California, that, like you said, you got fools that are online playing games in these chat rooms or whatever. And there's some real, real people. That's why I try to tell people they, they think I hate. You know, I love, I love Kelly. Like I'm, this, 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 this is my closest right now. This is my mentor, my brother right here. You see, you you see all the differences between us, and it ain't nothing but love and support and, and and everything else. But there are those who give that stain to, uh, uh, let's say LA or whatever by the shit they do, um. And then and then putting it back off on the hood because they're sitting there representing a particular hood or whatever. You know what I mean? So, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Like a lot of them that false rep and shit. A lot of them cats, you know. Uh, or even with the, let me let me ask you this one: with these fools that decide to make a decision to stop, they drop out. Okay, that's fine, right? Now, what's your take on them starting back up? Because I'm pretty sure you ain't got no problem with a man changing his life. But when he gets out of it to go back and do it again. I look at it this way, you know. Me, personally, at a certain age, you should drop out anyway. At a certain age. To me, okay, because Crips and Bloods are going to be here forever. Because you, you are know, what they call a reputable. You ain't got no stain on they, your they, shit or none like they, that, right? You are truly a reputable, right? They, yeah. They go, uh, they go, uh, but you just stop, you just grab out through this shit. It comes, it comes to a point in time to where you gotta sit down and you gotta look within yourself, you know. And a lot of them cats, you know, they say, okay, I'm gonna quit, and they quit for a while, and then they come back. <coughs> Let me put it this way if you pass 30 and you still gang banging, it's something wrong, partner. It's something wrong to me. I'm not saying I'm not saying to everyone else, but if you 30 and actively gang and you actively gang banging, it's something wrong, partner. It's something completely wrong in this picture. What's what's wrong? You know, your priority should be way different. Right at 30 years at old. At 30 years old than gang banging. Your priority, especially if you got a family, man, your priority should be like okay. I got to hang this up. I got to be here for my family. I got a couple kids, little babies. I got to raise them. I got a wife or I got a girl. 
you know, that I got to help support. So, you know, when you get 30, it doesn't mean, you know, if you, you should drop out. Now, if you don't, it doesn't mean that I'm going to look hey, I'm gonna, with a bad eye on you. No, it's just some of the decisions that you made that I don't agree with. That's it. Does that make you a bad guy? No. Does that make you a good guy? <coughs> Excuse me. No. It just makes me look at you like, well, this is what do it want to do. So I can move on. Right. You know, because I don't hang with gangbangers today. Do I know them? Yeah. When I go to LA, do I mess with some of your young homies? Yeah. I got to that because that's where I come from. They're but do I hang your people, they're do, your brothers. Do yeah, I hang with them though and say, let's go do this and that? No. I go through, I know where they at. Hey, I might spend 20, 30 minutes there kicking it with them, chopping it up, and then telling them, man, I'm gone. I'm out of here. I'm out of there. You know? And then it's a respect thing to me. A lot of them, hey, man, what you doing over here, homie? Oh, you just coming to town? Yeah, you ain't going to be long as you know because this is my little homies. They know, and it's a respect thing. Once you get a certain age, if you actively out there banging, you know, it doesn't mean that I lose respect for you. It just means I look at you in a different light. That's all. I just look at you in a different light. I look at you in a different light. But... You say you quit and you step back. Now I'm going to look at you in a whole completely different light. Hmm? Oh, they're going to do that shit all day. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to look at you in a whole completely different light. Why you stop and then start again? <coughs> you, you know, it then, like, in the prison, doesn't like, make it, sense. I mean, like, okay... You're in prison, that, that's a whole different kind of equation. Like, you're on the streets, you're out, like yourself, you just outgrew it, right? You but, just, but, okay, wait a minute, let me, let's back up. Let me, let me, let me, let me address it. You just said something, you, I think I know where you was going to take this. In prison, say you dropped out on the street and you go to prison. Doesn't mean you got to actually start banging again, it just means the big homie's in prison. You know, because you done done your homie. We know if we need you, you're going to be there. But the big homie is on a different page. Okay, explain so, explain that one to me, right? Like, okay, yeah. Because I'm, I'm thinking an older dude will come in and he's already, but he, you know, in the hood, he said he come back on a pro body, whatever, but he's good. He ain't fucking right. Ain't, that, that's how, you know, it's, see. He's still going to fit into the car because he's from the yeah, hood, right? Yeah, and, and, this, and then, and then. The best way I could put it, Crips, love to see their big homeboys retire. Love to see their big homies get out the game, you know, and live a different life, <coughs> you know. And then if they happen to get caught up for some bullshit and go to the pen for some, the homies ain't going to, the homies is <coughs> there. They're not going to, hey, homie, yeah, you know you're going to call this. No. And you know I don't fuck around no more, homies. All right, cuz. That's all that's going to be said. But they know they can count on him when, when the chips when is down. Yeah, he's going to be there. there. Yeah, he's going to be there, you know. And so, you know, Crips, you know, we have a, uh, a different idea of doing time. <laughs> you know, of, of retirement. Oh, okay, yeah. Getting in the game and getting out of the game. Because there's certain gangs in, in, in L.A., it's blood in, blood out. You know, and what did that mean? You blood in, you're going to fight or do something to share some blood from somebody or yourself going to have to share some blood. And the only way out, you're going to share your blood, not nobody else's, right. your blood. It means you locked in for life. And Crips and, you know, Crips and Bloods, we don't look at it that way. We, we, we've never had. You know, I've never seen an instance where Dude say, man, I'm, I'm, I'm through, man. I'm gone. You know, uh, let you young, youngsters have it. I'm through with it. And then at the back, black backlash, no. 
Hey, homie, cool. You through? Yeah, you can't. You made it through, big homie. So how could I mean? Because like, how could they tell you anything anyway when you're an original founding member uh, of the West Side Crips, right? Like, yeah, you know. But that's that's the games, period. Yeah, yeah. Do, you know, per se, the the, the the individual sets per se. The difference, yeah. You know, Hoover's gangsters, uh, uh blocks, all of them, man. Uh, all the East Coast, thirties, forties. You know, we don't, you know, it's not a forced thing. When you get in, it shouldn't be a forced thing. So when you get out, it's, it, not, it's not a forced It's thing. a question of your activity, right? So if you're active, you got you got to hold to them rules and the regulations and shit. But if you decide that you're, in, I'm, I'm not active, bro. Uh, you, you carry that shit to the grave with you, right? Uh, yeah, you can, yeah, you don't, you know, man, uh, you know, but like I said prior, you know, when push, even on the street, push come to shove, you know, the big homie going to be there. He may not be there physically. He may be there with a helping hand. A yeah, man. I got a couple of burners you can use. Yeah. Homie. You know, other than that, he's not going to physically get out there unless it was, shit was directed at him. Yeah. You know, I know I've seen that happen before some cats come out of retirement because why? Something was directed towards some OGs. And then who it was directed at, he didn't go, go get no youngsters. He went and got some G's and started with him that were retired and they did what they had to do. Right. You know, and kept it moving. And uh, so, you know, it wasn't like, well, I gotta go get the young homies. The young homies would have gladly done it. For this person, they'd have gladly done it. But no, nah, he said, no. Nah. Off film, I'll tell you about it. But he told him, no, nah, I'm not going to, uh, no. Nah. He said, I'm not going to, he told me, I'm not going to involve them. Justin, I went and got three G's. When they, matter of fact, you said when they heard about it, they was at my doorstep. <laughs> know what time this one was going to be. <laughs> you know, so, uh, Crips and Bloods, you know, uh, we have a different uh, uh, outlook on, on joining the gang and getting out the gang. And the politics, okay, the politics <laughs> of, of, of Crips, just, okay, because you can, you can really only speak to where you're from. Um, okay, so... From where you begin to where we are now, because your brother's co-founder, right? Uh, 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 A-Trey Gangster Crip. Salute Jeffrey Bacot, you know what I mean? Rest in peace. Um, so you, the, the evolution of that community itself went from Westside Crip to, uh, or Westside, right? To Westside Crip to A-Trey. Um, and, and, and how it changed in principle, right? From where you guys began to um, by the time it turns blue, they said, because that's by the time they come around, right? They're already blue by the time. You, what what year does that Nin come around? Nineteen. Uh, they started in nineteen, late nineteen seventy eight, early nineteen seventy nine. Uh, they didn't start as eight Trey Gangster Crips. They started as original Gangster Crips Trey Line, because oh, okay. a lot of them still say Trey Line, and you know when they say Trey Line, they real G's from eight Trey Gangster Crip. Eight Trey comes about. When Monster Cody, rest in peace, young homie. Rest in peace. He the one that started separating the set like north, south, east. And, I mean, north, south, west. He was hell. And so, uh, oh. and he's the one that know, named where he live at the north side. And so everybody else got sent on here north. We south of him, so we're gonna be the south side, and the west side is across western, the original. So uh, now they they they. They have the back west, the far west, and you know, I, I guess some more. We might uh, have to check a map of it one of these days, and, uh, and so you can show me. And uh, so, and then, a trays, gangster headquarters is at St Andrews Park, the original founding park for Crips. On the west side was St. Andrews Park. That's where the first and, put ons were. It, see, so let me address. Well, let me address yeah, this. Yeah, let me address yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me address this, man. Yeah, yeah, let me yeah. address this, man. Now, when we first started, there was no such thing as jumping in. Keep it hunting. Was no such thing as jumping in. You had to get your how on. <laughs> how how you become a crip. Say, for instance, you knew Took. Took Ash, or you knew Donald, and he asked you because they wasn't asking everyone, and they asked you, "Hey man, you want to join? Yay or nay? If it was nay, cool. If it was yay, still cool. Come on." 
but uh, it was no jump in. That didn't come about until we start, they start separating the individual sets. But as for the Crip Foundation, the organization, as one per se, no, we didn't We didn't do that. Okay, let's, uh, so when you guys hit your, let's say, first 10 members, right? You guys start meeting at the park, or is that is that was that just typical for you guys to be at the park? Like, what was, well, your, what that, was your typical day like? You know, what I'm saying? you know, like, Saint Andrews Park was. I, it's always been my home park because I only lived two blocks from it. So you know, uh, I lived two blocks from Saint Andrews Park. That's where I grew up. Two blocks from Saint Andrews Park, and uh, and the decision it's, it's, is more or less just hold it down, right? Yeah, it's all right. You like know, a little okay. history about Saint Andrews Park, though. 1963, if you were black, you couldn't go up in that park. Wow. 1960, you couldn't go up in the St. Wow. Andrews, you couldn't go up in St. Andrews Park until late, I say the late 64, early 65. Damn, so that's a rapid so, transition from that area moving like that from from white to completely color. white. And yeah, because they had a gang over there called the Spook Hunters. Wow, some white guy. Okay, now here's where they messed up at. They caught a brother over there. Sixty four. Brother named Charles. They caught him over there. And they beat him so bad. They didn't kill him, but they had to put a plate in his head. Now, he was off the east side. So he was going, he was going to he was going to uh, uh Fremont High School. And it was a gang of blacks going to Washington. They all got together, said, okay, this is how they want to do it, here's how we gonna do it. And they mobbed up to St. Andrews Park and we never had no problems since. Never had any problems since. That's when the white folks started moving out in droves because they seen them every Saturday, every Friday, and every Sunday. Everybody from all over coming up to St. Andrews Park. We gonna kick it. We don't care if we have to walk or get on the bus, but drive. We going to St. Andrews Park. These white folks are not having this park anymore. They're not gonna do this to no brother anymore. You know they caught some of the white boys up there. They beat them up real good. Sent them on their way. You know, but I never had any more problems. You raise an, you raise an interesting dynamic here. Uh, okay, so let me ask you this. Personally, um, because I know you 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 migrate from from Michigan there, um, and 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 you're old enough to remember the civil rights and all that struggle. Uh -huh. So, okay, how much of of the foundation of of Crips and Cripping? Is racial? How much would you say the motivation is racial? Because you guys have racial animus. All of you guys have certain racial yeah. animus in your heart over what you guys were experiencing. But okay, okay. So that's you, you raise know, an interesting point about that fight but, over that part. But okay, Daniel. But see, because okay. this you're 1970, right? We started in 1970, now, But you have to, you have to, you have to remember. When we started, we started at the back end of the Black Panthers. Because for one, people take notice when we adopted a certain dress style, some of it came from the Panthers. The coats and stuff. The coats. And we used to wear Tams. Some of the homies used to wear Tams too. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. that that came from a that came from what? The Panthers. Because and okay, now and you guys had sort of militant ideas as far as protecting the community. Community, and stuff, yeah. but where it got out of you know where it got out of hand is, you know, Crips blew up too quick. I was thinking and that, then, right? And then, but here's an, here's another important factor. I talk about it in my second book. You have the founders of Crips who aren't who at that time weren't sophisticated young men. They weren't, no, their knowledge didn't extend worldly. No. If it did, Crip would have been a different thing. You know, all they knew is, we're going to start a game, and this is what we're going to do. We don't have, you know, who's the leader? Raymond, the leader on the east side. Who's the leader on the west side? Took the leader on the west side. Okay, now, do you really think they was political then? 
They were thinking, okay, we got this organization. We're going to force the force some people to do some things for us in the community. No, no. When Crips first started, I say the first four to six months, it was manageable by Raymond and Tookie. Okay, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean by that? Explain that. Okay, it was manageable by Raymond and Tookie. By that I mean the numbers hadn't exploded out of the certain communities where Raymond and Tookie were known. And they can say mm -hmm. something so, to somebody, and, yeah. Oh, that, oh, now once it left the immediate under their control and went 30 blocks down the street where nobody ever went. Compton. No, I'm t on the west side. When it went thirty, when it went thirty blocks down into the thirties, when we all in the hundreds and the eighties yeah. and the nineties, it's hey, how you gonna go down there and tell them, hey man, I'm Tookie and I call the shots for the Christmas. So it, partner, I live over so, here. So it just kind of, pardon the expression, <laughs> but it kind of rolled down like that. Where like one said, just after another, down to. Down to the bottoms like that, or you're talking about no, the I, next one was then there after after Compton. No, see it. Yeah, see, I'm trying to understand. The, the west side, the west side blew up, but they were still un, under the fla uh, 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 under the blue flag and under Tookie. But he really had no say so outside of a small group of people in a band of people. Man, how you somebody going? How you gonna allow someone Tookie or not? I live in the 30s, in the 20s. I've never seen you in my life, but I'm a Crip. Me and my homies started this down here, but we under, we under the West Side Crip banner, but you ain't gonna come down here and call no shots. Okay, That's so, what you're not gonna do. Okay, so we have... We are gonna respect you. We but, have East Side, West Side. That's how it goes. From, from East to West, right? Because Raymond and Turkey, then Compton, 1969, right? East Side. 1970, West Side, 1971, Compton. Okay, so are the Compton sets formed at once or do they roll out? I, I can't tell you that you about sure you Compton. Can't speak on all, I, all I know is when I used to go out to Compton. With Wiener? Yes, it went. But I used to go through a Compton set, uh, but they had a little spot called the Grandies. It was some apartments and whatnot. I used to go up in there, you know? Or they say, man, we. The homies have given the party. I should go to any parties, you know, but as far as uh I couldn't tell you, Daniel, on that. You had to get somebody from Compton to tell you on that. But, you know, because I'm just trying to get a, a sense of, of of But I can tell you on the west side it was uh see what okay, check this out. I'm trying to be like this what, is what's the sets become all these different because like, I know in Compton you got Boot Hill, Corner Park and Carver Park and whatever else you have over there. But you South have side. east to west, you know what I'm saying, and then where you guys are on the west, you go you go from that to to a tray, and then your set start going. So I'm just trying to get a sense of like, cause you said like, yeah, man, that was pretty freaking rapid. So I'm trying to get a sense of how many different then sets would form, let's say from after Compton, cause that's you can't even say if those actually form at once or. No, I can't say. They, they probably did. It was probably just one after another, but I had to check it. Yeah, because they, uh, yeah, they split up just like everybody else did. You know, once I guess the West Side went, that's how everything else went. So here you were talking about, you're talking about Tuki losing control. You're talking about yeah, you, losing control yeah, after it's, that it's, point. It's too, hey, how can you control after about a year of cripping? How are you going to be able to control when Compton came in, I mean, before Compton came in, between the east side and the west side, there were, there were about 800 members then. Between the two, though. Between the two. And the biggest side so was... So from the east to west... The biggest side was the west side. You're talking in a matter of months, there was that many gang members generated. Mm hmm In a year's time, yeah. yeah. Just right there. That's yeah, on the east good. side and the west side. They're not counting, we're not counting uh, Compton yet. Mm. When Compton come into the falls, I'm willing to bet it was about 1,200. When they first come in, that boosted number to about 1,200. 
So Believe me. We're looking at about an 18 month period. Where Chris really, just right? exploded through the city and You're the talking about town. an 18 month period. You're talking about 1,800 gang members, more than 1,800 gang members. Fuck. And okay, so, okay, so, was, what, the Black Gorilla family was already, was already, was already founded at the time. Check this out. Did the Crips they form were, outside? Hey, the Black, Black Gorilla family wasn't founded on the streets, so I can't tell you. I know no, they, no, no, but I'm just were, trying to get a sense of the, of, of. They were of, founded in the pen. No, I know that, but they were already established by that time in there, by the time you guys yeah, formed the Crips on the outside. Uh-uh. No, so they start after About you. basically about almost the same, the same time. time? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah, no, I'm trying to get a general sense of, of the total explosions of gangs because um, the, 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 the brown gangs are, are there, you know what I'm saying, for, for, for a few generations already, mm -hmm. um, but a different style and a different, you know, a different culture gang-wise, um, different struggles, um, still racial, you know what I mean, um, but different. Um, but when you guys come along, a whole different dynamic happens because a trend is set nationwide, spark right there in LA, right there where you guys are, that just, that just, it, it just, you know what, burns but, uh, down the whole force. Yeah, hey, you know, when you just said, you know, we talking about expansion and all that. Because if we're on gangs in general, you, you I know, mean, we, and, uh, we speak on gangs in general. It's so. not, you know, uh. Crips need to uh, reinvent themselves. They really do. Because, you know, uh, to me, today, it's not cripping. You know, you, you know, it's, you know you're not cripping. You're just senseless killings. Right. You know, you're not cripping. But you call it cripping. It's not, partner. It's not. You know how? You know, where did the hatred come from? Where, you know, I know it's deep rooted, but how can I hate another person who looks exactly like me? Right. And have the, the mindset, hey, homo homicidal mindset, but he looks just like me. Don't you think that's a form of backdoor genocide? And the crazy thing is, is when studies have proven that if you put, okay, in a ballroom, a banquet, right? You introduce this person who knows no one in there. These studies prove that each person goes and seeks his, his own color, own skin color first. Why is that that in a panic room, you see those first, yet outside that room, those... The, the statistics prove black on black, on black brown mm. on brown, white on white. Mm. And we, we have a tendency to kill our own kind before we kill others. And this is a, this is a strange phenomenon in our communities. Well, I, with Crips, in blood, it, blood all come down to being territorial and isolation, isolationism. Meaning, the Crips first started, we hung to our territories. We hung, you know, we hung out. If we started on the west side, basically we, we hung out to where we started. Same to the east side, to, to the west side come along. Then they used to gravitate to the east side, I mean to the west side, to St. Andrews Park. But when it all come down to it, we were all territorial. We took it as, uh, check this out, this is, this is, this is our land here. You know, and this is where we this is where we gonna travel at. But me and Big Bob, shit, I went all over. Shit, I wasn't gonna be stuck in no one little square. No. Let's go out to Compton, let's go on the east side, let's go to Hollywood. I just went I went all over. You know, I just wasn't going to be stuck to one area. And then this is the cause of why it's been reinforced over the years that somebody that looks like you is your enemy. Because why? Confinement. We self-confine ourselves to areas, and okay, and only people we see is who? People who look like who? Me and you. We're in competition so, with our own kind. Okay. And, and so therefore, hey, year after year after year, you're just reinforcing it. Hey man, that's my enemy. 
He wears red, but he looks like me. But as long as he got that red on him, he live over here, that's my enemy. No, it's not your enemy. You made him your enemy. You know, your, your biggest enemy is just <clears throat> them demons you let dwell within yourself. You know, probably it's not, you know, that man's not your enemy. Nine times out of ten, that man ain't paying you no mind. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, another thing about gang banging today. 68% of the casualties of gang war are what? Collateral damage. And what is that? Unintended targets. 68%? 68%. And it's a proven fact. <clears throat> wow. You know, it's not something I just thought up. No, it's a proven fact. So two-thirds... Two-thirds two of, of victims of gang violence are innocent, are innocent. Are innocent people. Are innocent people. Yes. Because I said it before, you put you put semi-automatic weapons or automatic weapons in the hands of fools that had no training, and you know, and you tell them, hey, you go get so-and-so, and you see so-and-so, but he got, it's a gang of people on the block, and you just start spraying. What you think gonna happen? But the people that got, you was after, they done ducked out the well shooting back, but the innocent babies just got killed. Hmm? It happens all the time. Where? In Shy Rock, as they call it now, Chicago. It happens all the time. Where? In L.A. It's not just, you know, an isolated incident in just one air section of the state no, of the state. United that States. It's, this, is, this is nationwide, Every, partner. It's 68% is. of victims of gang violence is what? Collateral damage. And then, you know, that's why I have a beef. Well, this is my next book, but I'm going to spit a little of it now. That's why I have a beef with Black Lives Matters. You know, it's not the point. It's a good cause they're fighting for, but they need to qualify that Black Lives Matters and state if you were killed by a police, then your life matters to us. If you're killed by a black gang member, we ain't got nothing to say. But how can you morally state you have nothing to say when they not when they killing babies, innocent innocent babies? They killing what six months old toddlers and babies who never had a chance. And we give honor to them, and we give, and I, and, I, and I say we because I did. I got it tatted on me. I got I got the hood tatted on me, and we give we, we give glory and honor to this savagery and this brutality and this senseless violence that's aimed at ourselves and it denies us of our opportunities to succeed. Yeah. And we're we're robbing, you know, we don't care about our own lives, but we're taking innocent lives with <clears throat> us. Yeah, because we don't because, care about our own. Because you, that's, you know, and that's the key. And then, and, and, you know, in the senseless, Black Lives Matter, you need to make qualifications on, on your name now. Stating, we are, hey, we are only taking up, we only taking up uh, Black Lives that matter to us is you have to be killed by a law enforcement officer. You know, so... Uh, yeah, black lives they, they, don't matter apart from a political agenda, agenda that serves your best, best interest. interest. Uh -huh. That's what it's all about, you know. And uh, and how can any black morally support that platform? You can't. But if you do, you've been brainwashed, partner. A matter, you've been brainwashed because how are you going to allow an entity? an organization which is an entity to morally play God and state this black life is more valuable and important than that black life that was taken by a black gang member but the life that was taken was a 68 year old grandmother just coming home from church getting out of her car in her driveway now what makes her life less valuable than the other life that was taken by a police. You would think, you would Tell think me. That, you would think that 68% innocence would be more than enough for them to be there. Yeah, but we ain't talking about gang members getting killed. We're talking about innocent lives lost due to gang violence. You know, and, but like, you, do, do the lives not, matter or not? <laughs> it, it, but like you said earlier, it's all about the, about the money in politics. It's not attractive. 
enough for them. They can't make any money off of it. You know, they can't, they, you know, they can't make any money off of it. I, but, I say this, I, I say this, because speaking of making money off of and, 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 and pivot on this, is that, okay, as a visionary, right? And this is, this is, this is a vision, obviously, because we're talking where Nipsey was murdered, right? And we're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking neighborhood, we're talking Hoover, we're talking a tray, right? Right down that strip, all having business, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and and Nipsey's store, homies from each of the good hood are competing in the market and, and on his shelves for the business. And then, you know, they got their they got their barbecue joint right there. So, you know, the competition isn't about who who gonna kill more, who's gonna do more time in prison and whose homies are retarded, but um who's doing bigger numbers this week? Yeah, but well, how much did you how much did you do? How much did you do? Man, that, I clock, hey. we, we clock we clock this much this week. And people are not saying this for themselves. That would be beautiful, Daniel. But see, that like you always say, California's a different beast, man. And then over there. Over there, in, in, in see that goes I don't want to. I don't want to. What I don't you said about how big it blew up and exploded yeah. and everything else. I don't want to criticize no one particular crip game because if hey, hey, you looking at one, you, you know admit, it's up. You know you, you hey, you talk about one, you got to say the same thing about the other because they are all the same. It's a crip because they have to be the same. Why to survive? You know because if you, you wasn't man if. If you're not out there, if you're a crip game in California and you claiming this and that, you better be with it because you're going to be tested, partner. And if you're with it, you're going to keep your crip game. I don't know some crip sets have been just, hey, y'all move out the way. Well, we such and such. No, you're not such and such no more. Now you such and such. And I'm like, God damn. You know, but that's how, that's how the game goes. The strong survive while the weak wither away. In that, in that gang world in California, that's how it works. Why you think Hoovers, 60s, 8 tray gangsters, 30s, 40s, blocks, UGs, has been around for so many years? The East Coast for so many years. There's no gang cultures like 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 Los Angeles, California, gang, LA County gang culture, like it's it's distinct it's different there is nowhere else that i can i can think of that 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 is cultured in the sense that la is los angeles county is and california is about the gangs because it, it bro listen it, it's it's we don't gang bang like that nowhere else gangs are not the same as they are in california especially Especially in Los Angeles, California. And, hey, hey, we, we, I mean, we have different notions of it. Like, okay, out here, what I just, what I said about the vision I gave you, like that, because we don't have that problem. But you don't see it nowhere like that. Are there? Are there? Are there? Gang yes. Like I said, it's a whole different function. I cannot speak to nothing that's illegal because I'm not illegal. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? There's no way in the world I can speak to anything like that. That's the way it's supposed to be. Gangsters move in silence. I don't know any gangsters. Even if I, even if they came and was fucking with me, I wouldn't know that because no one's going to know their business like that. Yeah. But over there, I mean, there's, there, there's so many generations that have gone by and like a child is born into a world where you don't know anything but a tray, because that's that's his universe. That's not that's just his world. world that's, that's his it. whole galaxy. Basically, that's, and whereas that's us every, in up in every other city, it's not the same, bro. Like it is not the same, bro. Every last other city has the opportunity to to incorporate that vision as I gave it to you, right? Yeah. It, you can see it. You gave a buck. You can see it. You gave the caveat because you know the distinct difference. And you know the saturation, like there's no place like that. There isn't. You know, you you know, people can say what they want to say. And you know, I done said this numerous times, and I'm gonna continue to say it. And I'm because I know it's a fact. Gang, because I done seen it happen. 
Gang members coming from a different state to California talking about they rep, rep that particular gang and they get with that gang. 90, at that gang from wherever they come from, on 95% of them couldn't survive in California. Now, 5% probably could, but 95% of them couldn't survive in California because you know, it's a different beast. You, and, you, you know, if I'm coming from here, going there like that and trying to do that stupid shit, we know better. It's, yeah, it's a, <laughs> exactly. It's, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a different beast. I done seen some people come from out of state, you know, claiming this and claiming that. Or, you know, homies and told me such and such or somebody from this different <laughs> gang that I was cool with, Tim me, man, woo, woo, woo. And I'm like, okay. Nah. You know, saying, yeah, no, they ain't ready with it, really with it. You would have to grow up like we did on the east side right here in that culture, in that saturation with that war to really understand what he's talking about because, like, you don't go nowhere without being in the gang. That's right. And then... Not not that you're joining the gang, but you don't turn no block without entering the gang. And see, then, then, then you know, you have to factor in uh, the geography of it also. Because in Cali, what is it? Almost 5 million people in the city of Los Angeles wow. in the 16 square miles radius. In 16 square miles, you got five, I think it's almost six. You guys got what, three, four times more than us and we have like way more square miles in the city yeah. of Phoenix, around the city of Phoenix? The city of Los Angeles is 16 square miles and you got damn near six million people up in there. And out of that, you think you hey, you, you got a hunt just okay, sixteen square miles. Just think of this. Just in the city of Los Angeles alone, you have seventy five crip gangs and twenty five blood gangs just in the city. Just in the city. We're not talking about the county also, just talking about in sixteen square miles, you got seventy five crip gangs and twenty five blood gangs. Now, Crips outnumber Bloods four to one. So Bloods have to be what? More ruthless. And they get in against Crips to keep the Crips off of them and keep, they, and keep them honest. So, you know, that's what, that, that violence, a lot of that, 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 that real extreme violence, that's where they come from. Because Bloods knew they outnumber four to one. So they have to, when they get in, they have to get down, they have to get down proper and get down right. Because they know they only only not only warn with the crip blood that's next door to them, they warn against every crip in the city of Los Angeles. It's not just, oh, well, I'm warned with them. No. You warn with every crip set in the city of Los Angeles, you were the blood. Back in the days, you were warned with everyone. And you mean to tell me you got some guy guys asking me, no, man, coming from out of state's a different beast, but bros. It's, hey, Cali's a different beast. You can say what you want to say. You can be that tough guy, you know, but... Everybody's tough where they at. Thank you. Everybody's tough where they at. But, you know, man, uh, it's a completely different beast. I'm not saying, you know, all of y'all I'm saying, but about 95% of you wouldn't make it, homie. Wouldn't make it. It's not, it's, not, it's, it's not even worth it, man. If you're going to turn some way to do something... You might as well turn to make a difference in a better way for your life than to turn further in the air of your way. You know you're what? already there, in there the is, let, You know, I got I have a question for you out of staters. Uh especially if you got a California Crip uh Crip name or blood name. Do you know the culture of that game that you are claiming? Do you know why it started? You know who started it? You know what is what it's about today? Or what it about it, what it evolved in from the day it started, and do you know the wars that they're fighting? Why they fighting them? How long they've been fighting them? Now, how can you, out of state, take up a banner of a crippled blood gang and take up their war, but you out of state and you killing somebody out of state behind a California gang? Now, does that really make sense? Hmm. You can say it does, it doesn't. Why are you taking up their banner? You know, they're not coming out, they're not coming to your state and helping you with their banner. I mean, helping you with yours, no. But no, you want, you know, why? Like somebody said, 
California, gang capital of the world. Want to be? Yeah, we want to be recognized too. So we're gonna take a Cali, a crib, or a blood name. No, it, and we, but you can't pick up their mantle because for one, a trade gangsters been worn with neighborhood road of sixty since nineteen seventy nine. That's how long that war been going. It's been no, it's has have never been no lulls in it. It's been going on. Now, you mean to tell me you from sixties, but you never been to California? You see somebody that's from Matrix Gangster, and you ready to kill him for what? You don't, you know you don't even know that man, and you've never been to California. Why you want to, all you know is what well, the dude come from Cali told us this is what it is. We see it on Facebook and you know the homies be telling us. No, they might be telling you wrong. And then it's so asinine that you're going to take up a cause that you know nothing about. You want to kill a man because why? He from another set, from out of state. Or he live here but he claiming this and that's that set from out of state and my set from out of state, but they war with them, so we're going to war with y'all. That's stupid. That's real. That's real stupid. But it is what it is. You know, Crippin and, and Blood, it's gotten out of hand. Crips and Bloods have gotten out of hand. There's no more, there's not any more, how can I best put this? Uh, Crips, Bloods, you're terrorists. The best way I can put it is spit it out straight. Straight chaser. Urban straight no chaser. Terrorists. Yeah. Unfiltered dialogue. Urban terrorists. Crips and uh, Bloods are urban terrorists. We're terrorizing our own community. Yeah, the ter yeah. Crips and Bloods are urban terrorists. What? Okay, now. In California, Los Angeles, they don't go to Beverly Hills with that shit. Why? White folks are not allowing that. They shut that shit down. They get the National Guard in there. And they're not allowing it. They used to try to go to Hollywood, but once they seen that tourism dropping off, oh, no, they, the city of Los Angeles cut that in the bud because Hollywood is part of the city of Los Angeles. It's just a section called Hollywood. But it, it comes under the jurisdiction of as being what? Part of the city. It is the city. Let me ask you this. It, if, if we had the resources, right? All, all, all expenses paid. We had the resources to provide. Is it possible? Is it possible to pay away the problem of gangs in Los Angeles? No. See, so we couldn't one, even we couldn't even no. build schools. We couldn't even. Check, check, let me put it this way. Let me let me explain this in this way. In this case, what's good for the goose may not be good for the gander. Because for one, coming up in South Central, and you would have to live there to understand, to see the diversity, and see how. Once you go from east to west, how the economy seems like it goes up, how the homes seem like they're value more, much more valuable. Then when you go on the east side, how it seems like depreciated values. Depreciated a home. It's it's a completely in different environment. It's a completely different environment. When you go, when you cross Main Street, it's a completely different environment. It's interesting that you took to the land as yeah. the as a root of the problem and saw that resource. Yeah, and so you know, as lacking as a primary. Yeah, need. it's not you know because one solution in California, especially in L.A. When I say when I be talking about California, I'm talking about Los Angeles because I don't know nothing else about nothing else, and I can't talk yeah. on it. When I speak, when I say. California, I'm talking about LA, South Central. As a matter of fact, let me hit this note right quick. There's no more South Central Los Angeles. It's just South Los Angeles. Why? Because the city felt the negative uh, image given off by South Central uh, 
with the gangs could be, you know, would necessitate a change in names. So they dropped the Central and it's just South now. Okay, but now you dropping names, but you haven't changed. changed. You haven't changed <laughs> anything. Nothing, Nothing has changed. Okay, it even they have a strip in Los Angeles. It's a street. Everybody know what I'm talking about. Vermont, from Florence in Vermont to what is that? Imperial in Vermont. And you can check this out, folks. You can Google this uh, uh, on the internet or whatever. It's the most violentest, deadliest street in Los Angeles. Because for one, you have along that strip, you got two of the most notorious street gangs of all time, Crips. You have eight trade gangs and Hoovers. But, you know, they, they've been allies for years. So along that strip, but now when you get further down, you got what? Bloods. Here's where the problem is. Everybody gets Denver, them intersections. Uh, Denver Lane. Damn. You know, Denver Lane Bloods, they not no joke. And you guys are up they're and down. No you, guys, you guys are up and, and down them, up and down them strips. Like, uh, uh, and it, it ain't no joke. And see, uh, especially Hoover's because Hoover's are right there with them. 107's. Lem Deuces right there with them Denver Lane. You know, and they, uh, that that war has been going on for a while. And then and then you have to watch out for the South Lows, which is Hispanic gang. They won with the Hoovers. And you know, they don't, you know, they don't take time out to see, hey, he, <laughs> hey, 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 see if he's from Hoover, but you're in Hoover Hood. Nah. Checking on. You know, it happened a couple of times, but it, in the summer, you know, they seen a little homie come out the store with a tax on. They asked me, where you from? And he showed him he was from Matrix Trade Gangster. They, they let him go. You know, said, you're not from, you're not from Hoover, are you? He said, no, nah, because we looking for some Hoovers. <laughs> oh, they, they, they tell the truth. No, I know, I know. I'm looking for some Hoovers. I mean, I don't know why I'm laughing, brother. This shit's tragic, dude. Yeah, it's tragic, I mean, man. I, I just, and you know, the way the shit, God, man. and the way, and, and the reason behind some of this shit is so stupid. It's so stupid. Yeah, when you get to the details of a lot it's of this so shit stupid. that sparks it, it always is, isn't it? Like some of the most stupid, petty, trivial ass shit. Now, a couple of them I can understand. Big Rick's brother getting killed. That's kicked off the 60. And uh, he was fist fighting with another with another homie for May Trey Gangston. Nope. Another brother ran somewhere, come back, pushed the homie out the way from from gangster and he shot Big Rick's brother, but he wasn't from a Trey gangster, you know. But they claimed he was, so phew, sixty did so. They, it wrong, it went the way it did. It went the way, they went the way it did, so you know. And now that Hoover and that soft flow, I don't, you know, they say uh, that uh, a Hoover killed one of them soft flows son or something back in the Whoa, day. Oh yeah, that's. A and, and he won the game, remember? And they say it's yeah, been on ever since. Yeah, that shit gets impossible right there. Yeah, they say it's been on ever since. So I can understand. Did your brother get shot? Didn't My brother been shot a couple times by them 60s. But you know what? It's, 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 he chose that life. Tell, tell the people a little about, about your brother Jeffrey, though. He's, he's, he's Big a, Bay. He's a legend over there. In, uh, Big Bay. Rest in peace, young bro. I talk to him every day. Oh, you do. That's a you... picture right up there. I'm gonna get a better picture, but that's that. Uh, Damn, that is a Big Jeff, dude. Big Jeff, Rayford, Big Side, Miles, Melvin, Big Skull, Farmer, Cornell, Big Hunchy, McKinney, Jesse, Hillbilly, Ford. Are your five co founders of A Trey Gangster Crips? But the original name was Original Gangster Crips, Trey Line. Uh, and as I said before, Monster come in, he the one, you know, suggested that the change, you know, he just didn't change, he had to suggest, and the, and the homies had started, so okay, we go with that. 
you, you just didn't come in and change it. So let me get it. Let's get that straight. You know, when I said he the one to say he the one initiated the change. You know, so uh, th you know that's how that went. And then uh, they started in nineteen seven. I think they started in nineteen seventy eight. Yeah, because I was just leaving Tracy, going down to CMC's for to take a psych evaluation. And uh, when I got down there, my on my first visit, my brother was telling me I couldn't believe it. My square ass brother, but ain't hey, my brother wasn't square anymore. So he was he was no. square. He was. He Look, played football and shit, right? My brother, and everyone that knows him, know <laughs> know this for he, a fact. He went about that life. My first. brother, <laughs> my brother, had he had uh, he went to North he went to North Texas State. He could have went to he wanted to go. See, so what do he want to go? He wanted to go to SC, but they wanted to play line, uh, 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 offensive lineman. He, uh, SC wanted to play offensive line. Oregon wanted him to play offensive line, but he wanted to play linebacker. So North Texas State told him, yeah, you can come play the Buffalo. So you can come play linebacker. Okay, so he went there. He also, while he's there, he played on the baseball team. He also was drafted by the Montreal Expos for first base and pitching. Wow. So uh, how, how old was he at that point? Then my brother was, uh, he was 18. Wow. No, 19. Yeah, 19. See, I was uh, 78, 80. Yeah, you yeah, think your brother yeah. had interesting stories because you were, you were a potential Olympic swimmer. No, I played baseball. Oh, yeah. I love baseball. baseball. I, did you swim? I could swim. I could still swim today. I'm trying to find them. This summer, I'm going swimming. But anyway, uh, yeah, those are the founders of A Trey Gangster Crips, which was originally named, named Original Gangster Crip Trey Line. Uh, and the most prominent of them all is, you know, keep it hunted, is Big Side. Uh, he was the heart and soul of A Trey Gangster Crips. Original Gangster Crip Trey Line, however you want to call him, that was the Godfather. So what happened with your brother? What happened with your brother? He 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 uh, he was nineteen when he was drafted with you said Montreal. Montreal, but he wanted to, he didn't want to play baseball. He wanted to play football, you know. So, but when he got shot, that killed his whole career. So how did that? How did that happen? I was in the pen. They just told me about it when I. It was uh. So the war had just started. They say, uh, was Big he Rick, living? Was he in college at the time, or Big Rick? Yeah, Big uh, Big Rick's brother had just got shot. About a, they say about two three weeks. No, yeah, about a week. And then my brother had come home, and my brother was home for they was there for spring break. He was home for spring break. All right, my brother Rayford. Hunchy and somebody else, oh, Herbert, ex con, went over there to talk to him, say, see if they can, uh, man, uh, get this shit straight before it turned out to be something that it shouldn't be, which it did. Okay, they say, while over there on Slauson and Van Ness, uh, that liquor store across the street from the Jack in the Box, uh, my brother and them seen some of them. Some of they, they shot callers, so they get out, they stopped the car, get out, was talking to them. They say a big fee handing a gun, a little 22 to somebody. And who were they told me? They told me who it was. I forgot. I can't recall right now. You know? And then uh, told him to shoot my brother. Because my brother was bigger than all of them. He shot my brother. My brother turned and he shot my brother in the back. He got shot twice. He got shot twice in the back. And they said they rushed him into the uh, big side, rushed him to the hospital. You know, they said they wasn't waiting on no ambulance because them, them fools out there, they, they'd, have been they'd have been dead. And they couldn't wait for no ambulance because, yeah. you know, them sissies. You know, so uh, the day he died, my brother still had one of them bullets in him. They could never move it. They said if they touch it, move it, it might hit his spine and paralyze him for life. So uh, that killed all sports. And that, he ends up in the pen shortly after that, huh? 
No, he didn't go. My brother only been to the shit. My brother didn't go to the pen until I almost came home. When I came home, so eighties. Matter of fact, keeping it hundred. My brother didn't go to the pen until after I came home. Was that early eighties? Eighty three. He went to the pen in eighty. See, eighty five, eighty six. Oh, so he seen you come home then. Oh yeah, he didn't want to pick me. He didn't want to pick when you went into the pen. He didn't want to pick me up. Twenty two. Let's see. Let's see. I was 22, so that made him 14. Damn. Yeah, I, she, he didn't want to come to the pen and pick me up. Yeah, he drove up there and picked pick his big brother up. And uh, yeah, he was, uh, but the heart and soul of A-Trek Gangster Crip was Ray from Miles. Let's keep it hundred. Big side. Used to call, call him side one, then he shortened it. Man, call me side, okay? <laughs> he came through, he got tired of the whole thing. Look, he was the man. Yeah. He was the man. Everybody know what I mean. He was the man. And you know, if, you know, I noticed something there. Since we've been talking, sitting here talking about our Crips and leadership and all that. Now, if Rafer would have been the leader of Crips, it would have been a different story. You know, because there's one thing I can say about Rayford and 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 the way the way he did, he he gave advice. You just this is one brother that I admire. You just couldn't go and tell him anything. No. Because for one, he's gonna research it first. You know, if you come to him, you from the land, and you tell him, man, woo 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 woo. I got to do, what do you think I should do? He going to tell you first, man, do you really want to do it? Think about it. Sleep on it. Think, do you really want to do it? You know, because he going to give you the pros and the cons. He's not going to never tell you, yeah, just going to do it, you know, blindly. No. He's going to give you the pros and cons. If he feels you shouldn't do it, he going to tell you. Straight, point blank. No, man, I don't think you should do that one, man. But if he think you should do it, he going to let you know. Point blank. Yeah, I think you need to do that, partner. You know, that's what I loved about that brother. It wasn't no in-between with him. It's going to be either or. It's not going to be, well, let me think about this. No. You, and plus, you, like I said previously, you just couldn't tell him anything. Because he's going to research it. And me and, that, me and that brother sit up and have some hell of a debates. You know, because for one, I lived with that brother for about four years. Me and his, his sister was hooked up. You know, and uh, their mother just died. I mean, their father just passed away. You know, and uh, me and his sister had hooked up. And then, matter of fact, he asked me. He said, man, check this out. You ain't, you ain't going to come over here and live with Selden, me and Selden? Uh, no, nah, man, I was cool where I was at. You know, the one day I just relented and said, yeah, okay, cool. And, you know, me and that brother used to sit up and have some hell of the debates. You know, and... He showed me his true self. You know, you just couldn't tell him anything. And he was, a, and if he liked you, and he that friendship was there, and he had a bond with you, it was always there. You know, and uh, that was a hell of a brother. Because what a lot of people don't know, in that neighborhood over there, he saved a whole bunch of people from, from hey. From getting their cap pill. Yeah. I mean, he saved a whole lot of people. You know, I can think of two right off the hand, off the handle. That if it wasn't for him, you know, they, their mother and father would have been had black dress and black suit long years ago. You know, so uh and then he always thought about the kids. From day one, he always thought about kids and doing something for them at the park, starting this this league. They needed referees. Man, I do this shit. They needed money. He put up the money. You know, that brother, that brother did a lot for that park, for that community, whether you know it or not. Even though he was a gang member, he did a hell of a lot for that community. I mean, a hell of a lot. Because if one for him, a lot of things is going on over there now at the uh, at St. Andrews wouldn't be going on. A lot of programs over there wouldn't be happening if it wasn't for whom? Rayford Side Miles.